Welcome to another one of my race videos. This one I've decided to do as a voiceover. This is the 2021 Hammerhead Race in Ocala, Florida. And I'm coming through the start area and you'll see the sensors right there to start the timing, which I'll talk about in a minute. So this is a race that used to be in April and now it's in February as part of the Florida Endurance Series. This is the third round of the series and they have a 25, 50 and 75 mile option. When they had it before, it was a 25, 50 and 100. So they've changed it up a little bit. So back to the timing sensors that I showed there in the beginning, because of the COVID issue, I'm filming this during the pandemic and we started in small groups. And so you basically could start whenever you wanted to. They did have the people doing the 25 mile option start after the marathoners, which were the 50 and 75 mile group. But it was basically a time trial. So when you went through those timing sensors, there was a little chip on your number plate that started your time. So my strategy was to kind of wait and let everybody go since I was doing the 25 mile option. That's because I really wanted to focus on cross country this year and I wanted to ride a cross country pace and I wanted to get back home with the family because we had some stuff planned for later that day. So again, my strategy was to let some people clear out and I waited until no more groups really heading out thinking that I would be able to ride my own pace and not encounter a lot of groups. But literally within the first couple minutes, I started to hit groups of people that were hard to get around. So we came out here on the pavement. This is a paved bike trail that's fairly new to the Santos trail systems. I would say it's only a couple of years old and it's a pretty long trail. I would say at least 15 miles. And here we're about to go up a hill and then head over the land bridge. So I got on this guy's wheel drafting a little bit as I'm trying to pass as many people as I can before we have to head back into the single track. So again, heading up a, a hill here that's kind of hard to see in the video. And right after we come around this right hand bend, we'll be going over the land bridge. The land bridge is a bridge that goes over I-75. It's kind of cool. It's got shrubs and trees and all that. Hard to see the interstate from the video, but we are going over Interstate 75, just south of Ocala, turning back onto the single track. So the trails were in great shape for this race. We had a lot of rain the weekend before, and then I think they had rain the day before this event, which made for trails that were really packed down. Sometimes they can get fairly dry and slippery and sandy. And not only were the trails good, but the weather was absolutely perfect for this day. It was in the 30s when I left my house. By the time I got down to Ocala, it was in the 40s. And then by the time we started, it was in the 50s and around 60 degrees at this point. This is one of the few really open sections of the race. It's a really cool section, goes for about a mile or two. Kind of reminds me of areas that I've ridden in Arizona, just the texture of the soil, how open it is, really cool section. Also nice because you can pass people when you need to. Really easy to come around, just call out a side and people move over. So passing was not an issue here, but it became an issue coming up as we entered into the single track. So going back to the weather, we get some absolute perfect riding weather this time of year. I would say the best time to ride in Florida is late October through mid-May. This guy was really cool about letting me around. I just said, hey buddy, need a pass, and he pulls over, which is really the way you want it to be done. So yeah, that pass was easy. I'll talk about some more coming up that were not so easy. But going back to the weather, so you know, I from time to time go out to places like Bellingham, Washington in the summertime where they have just perfect weather in the summer. So we kind of get their summer weather in the winter because like I said, by the time I finished this race, it was probably in the mid 60s and not a cloud in the sky. So really beautiful day of riding. This was one of the only guys that passed me on this event. He was fairly aggressive about passing uh, generally what I do is I call out, I need to come around and just wait for someone to give me 
space to come around. Um, this guy was kind of forcing his way around people, which did not make these ladies happy, to say the least. But he got around. He was obviously trying to be extremely competitive. Uh, I was a little bit more polite in my passing, and I did get caught behind some groups that made it very difficult to get around. And after getting stuck behind a few groups, I kind of resolved that this was not really going to be a race for me. It was just going to be a fun ride. Uh, fortunately, I did get chances to open it up, particularly on the second half of the race. But again, I got behind some groups where they would not let us around. I, there was one particular group, and this is an example of one group that really slowed me down. But um, I got behind one group where there was a guy out in front and he just would not let us around. I mean, we probably rode for a couple miles and I kept calling back, hey, you need to come around. Hey, you need to pass. You got a group behind you. And the guy just wouldn't let us around, which was really frustrating. Um, that guy in front of me and his buddy cut the trail and I kind of wish I would have followed them there because they got around this group. And then I got stuck behind this group and took me about a minute or so to get around. So again, this is where I kind of just resolved and this was not going to be an ultra competitive event for me. It's more like interval training because you got sections like this where you could just kind of really open it up and, and go fast and then you get behind a group and you recover and then you get around that group and then you open it up again. So again, I enjoyed it. I was really glad I, I did the event. It just didn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to. And by the way, I am riding my Niner RKT9 RDO. That's my preferred bike for cross-country races and marathon races, especially ones like this where it's pretty tight and twisty. That guy let me around pretty easily. That was cool. But that bike, the geometry is getting a tad dated. So it's got a 70 degree head angle. I've got a 120 fork on it. There are a few times where I feel like that bike is a little too twitchy for me, just a few. But then there are days like today where the geometry feels absolutely perfect. Um, that bike is one of the longest running bikes for me. I've had it for two and a half years and it's just still, it's going so strong. I mean, I, I hardly do any maintenance on it. And it's just a really fun bike to ride, especially when you're, you know, just trying to slam through corners, get through tight trees as fast as you can. And that's when that steep geometry doesn't bother me at all. It's a super fast bike. This group was moving pretty well. Most of these trails on this course were pretty fast and flowy. There were some really tight sections, some tight trees, but for the most part, the trails were rolling really well. So if you're not familiar with Ocala Santos trails, we started at the land bridge trailhead and most of the trails west of the land bridge are like this. This is another section where we came out on the paved bike trail only on it for about 30 seconds to a minute and then we went back into the single track but the way this trail system is you can head out on one section of trail and then come back on another section of trail and you're not doubling back on any of the single track you do double back on a few of those paved bike trail sections but as far as the single track uh, you're not doubling back at all so even just getting out here and riding it's really cool because you can head out pretty far, like 20 miles, and then come back on another trail. So flowing through this section pretty good. The nice thing about Santos is there's just a ton of variety. So like I said, we started at the Land Bridge Trailhead. If you start over at the Vortex Trailhead or the main trailhead is where you get more into the technical stuff. And it's slow tech, which I really like. Not everybody likes that kind of trail, but I like the slow tech because it really works on my bike handling skills. Some of it's pretty rocky and you've really got to muscle the bike over some of the rocks over there. And also there's a lot of jumps and drops, some pretty big drops at the vortex area, like 35, 40 foot drops. And so again, there's just a lot of variety at Santos. So you can get out on these fast trails or just go work on your jumping or bike handling skills over around the vortex so a lot to choose from i think there's probably like 
80 miles of trail or more in Santos. This is one of the only kind of slow tech sections of this course, just kind of rooty and probably, I don't know, 15 miles into the race at this point. This is one big 25 mile lap. And I really liked this section, just muscling the bike over the roots and stuff like that. But like I said, it's one big lap. So obviously if you're doing the 50, you do two. And if you're doing the 75, you do three. And by the way, I'm racing the open class, which ends up being the pretty fast class because I couldn't really race an age group since I did a few Cat 1 races last year. So again, to pass people, you know, I would just call out sides. And I would say most people, especially at this point of the race, would just let you by pretty quick. It was in the beginning is when I really got stuck behind groups. But at this point, you know, we're, we're coming back towards the uh, start area and people were pretty cool about letting you around. I ended up catching a guy that we rode together for a while. And it was really nice because I, I, we probably rode for at least 10 miles together. We were pretty equally matched as far as our pace. In fact, we finished right next to each other in the standings of the event. But this is a trail section that I really enjoy. Like there's some really cool fast sections, nice little downhills. But uh, we were chatting and riding together and really made for a nice way to finish up the race. Something that I really wish I had put on my bike was my Incredibel. And if you're not familiar with that, you can kind of turn it on and off, but it uses the vibration and bumps on the trail to sound the bell. And that would have really helped with uh, people that are in front of you that you need to pass. This guy did have a bell and it was pretty effective. So this is the last time I'll probably do an event like this where I don't have that bell and you know it when you when you turn the bell on it, it constantly goes and it probably would have helped with that guy and that one group that would not let us around there were like six or eight of us behind him and if I would have had that bell just ringing the entire time he probably would have just got annoyed and let us around this is a cool section where you come up this bridge you're climbing up it. it's kind of hard to tell in the video but it is a climb and then we encountered this group that we got stuck behind just for few seconds and they let us around so this is the guy I was telling you about that I was riding with and again we were pretty evenly matched so it was good at this point to finally ride with someone it, up until this point I was just riding by myself like I said the only guy that passed me was that one I talked about and uh, he was motoring pretty good I don't know what class he was in or what division he races but he was motoring so I uh, couldn't keep up on his wheel it's a pretty cool section kind of open we're gonna pop out onto the pavement coming up here in a minute or so and then turn back on the final section of single track or actually the second to last final section of single track and uh, okay this is the pavement and it used to be when they had this race, this was Lime Rock, and then it would go almost all the way to the finish line, but they cut a new section of single track. So most of this event was on single track. And so this is it. This is the new single track, and it was not quite as buff as the other single track we were on for this event. And I was coming around a downhill right-hand corner and my front tire hit a tree stub that was still on the trail and my front tire skipped out and I thought I was going to go down but it grabbed at the last split second which I, it really would have sucked if I crashed because we were almost at the finish line and it would have been a hard crash because I probably would have landed with my ribs on a tree stub sticking out but if you saw that Max's tire video I just put on a recon on the front I took off a recon race and put on a recon to give me more grip. And I almost kissed that tire when I got back to the finish line because I'm convinced the additional cornering knobs on the recon compared to the recon race helped me to not crash when I came around that corner. Again, that would have been a pretty nasty slide out. So here we are almost back to the finish line, motoring along on this last piece of single track. 
And this guy was keeping a great pace. And when we hit the gravel road coming up, he just took off and I could not stay with him. So I actually beat him by time, by one position, because we didn't start together. But this is the last section, this gravel road that went for about a mile or so. And then we're gonna come into the finish line. So this is right about where we started. That single track on the left is where we started. I'm gonna come through a little gate here. And you saw those flags, that's where we started rolling. 25 miles earlier and this is the finishing chute and you'll see the little sensors up at the top and again we have the chips on our number plate to stop the time so that was the 2021 hammerhead endurance race in ocala florida